Welcome back to Kicking It With Kenya. We've been gone for a long, 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 long time, and I'm happy to be back on this couch bringing new episodes to everybody that watch. Obviously, we are going to start with the biggest topic out right now, the hottest movie out right now, which is The Joker. We're going to talk about that movie because I know I ran to see it the day it dropped, and you ran to see it shortly after me. How did you feel about Joker? I felt like the movie was good. That movie was good to me. Like, Joaquin Phoenix did the damn thing playing Joker. I thought it was good for what they were going for. I thought that he did a good job in, in the, at breaking down, like, the psychological effects of how certain things, um, how certain things come into play and shape what makes a character right. become a character. Because he started out with good intentions, you know, it's just... Um, I think that uh, to kind of get into certain things about it, I feel like my fear going into the movie was they're going to make him too likable. Like if the movie's going to be him essentially getting bullied the whole movie and then he starts to go down this dark path and kill people, we're going to sit up there and kind of root for him. I mean, and I'm not saying I rooted for him, but a lot of the this is spoilers. So oh yeah, this is definitely spoiled. So when he bodies the dudes on the train, everyone in my row was like, "That's what y'all get." Like y'all were fucking with him. He wasn't doing nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like, and when he um, I feel like to me like the darkest moment in that that was like kind of like a was when he killed his mom. Um, I mean, I get you know she kind of you know she was going through what she was going, but just the visual of seeing like you kill the old lady that looks like she's about half dead anyway. Right. That was kind of like a, ooh. And I like how they left certain things to imagination, like Zazie Beetz character, you know, when he goes into the apartment she and he's on the couch. Like, just the way he looks, like, when you just start to see the darkness to take over. I, 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 I enjoyed that, like, his descent into madness. And then when he ultimately becomes the Joker at the end of the movie, I predicted it, personally. I, 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 I predicted the whole killing... Robert De Niro. I did not. I didn't see that part. I did. I did. I did because because it, it's it's the Joker. So and if this is the beginning of the Joker and the Joker is well known in the in Gotham, then in theory he would have had to have done something that kind of sparked that. Like how does everyone know the Joker? So as soon as he goes on the show, well he's obviously not going to kill himself. So he's going to kill him on live TV. And then he said, "Introduce me as Joker." So now you get in the whole like, oh, the Joker did this, and and then he becomes like you know, so known in Gotham. So um overall though, I thought I thought it was I thought it was very good. I think Joaquin Phoenix definitely delivered an Oscar an Oscar worthy performance. And um I think well I'll say my do I think he's the best joker for for after. I don't know. I feel like when you was like, oh, what you didn't want. Because I remember you told me this. You was like, yeah, I just feel like we're not going to root for the bad guy. We don't want it. We shouldn't have to like the villain. But I feel like the thing with the Joker is he's already a well-liked character. That's unavoidable. Like, Joker is, he's Joker. He's the draw. He's one of the most recognizable fictional villains, like, worldwide. So you can't, no matter what you do, we know he's insane. We know all the things he has done. But no matter what you do with Joker, he's going to be liked. Because he is light. That's why people love seeing any movie with Joker in it. They talk about Jack Nicholson still. We talk about Heath Ledger. I mean, I like Jared Leto. But some people have their issues. Fine. But Jared Leto was the the main reason why people ran to see Suicide Squad. And people was mad that his part got shut down. Jared Leto was not the main reason people ran to see Who Suicide ran to see Squad. Joker. What's Joker, joke, but you know what I mean. Like Joker is naturally going to be light, so I mean that wasn't my problem at all. I just honestly like this. I just didn't want it to be like an excuses movie, like you know, like uh, oh well because you had a bad day, then this is why. I don't. I feel like they shied away from that. They didn't make it like excuses. Like even though they made him kind of seem victimized in a weird way, I don't feel like he was a victim. If that makes sense to like, he had an issue. He had, he clearly had a disability that we, like, and when he wrote that, the thing with people, when he said, um, people with disability, the thing with how people treat people with disabilities, they want you to pretend you don't have one. Something like that. I'm probably getting it wrong, but he clearly had a disability. And I feel like what they, they use Joker as a way to, the reason why I like it is kind of describe like people, 
people nowadays are really not nice mm-hmm. anymore. Like, we're not that nice. People are so quick to, like, want to hop and talk shit about somebody on Instagram. People are so quick to be trolls. People are so quick to be rude or mean. Like, the snarky personality is really becoming everybody's shtick now. Mm-hmm. Like, nobody, people think being nice is soft. And it's like when he went on that rant at the end about how there is people like people are not nice. We're not decent anymore. I really think in a way where I took from it, like society in a way, we're really spiraling to being like really selfish beings. And we're not looking at other people with problems or quick to lend a hand or nothing like that. So I feel like Jogo was a good like jump off for having certain conversations and using that. Like, I feel like. I just love the little nuances of him becoming Joker and the things that make him Joker because the reason why I love Joker is I love his theory behind all it takes is this one bad day. So, I mean, we always like to make jokes about the weird people in school, but if you were mean to that weird person, <laughs> you were... I was always cool with the weird people in my school, so I had no problem with that. Because you ain't want to get shot. <laughs> no, no, I'm just genuinely not a jerk. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But, but one thing I will say, you said... You said I didn't want people to go into the movie. My fear was that they were gonna like Joker. That's not that's not that's not true. I said my my viewpoint on the movie before seeing it mm-hmm. was what's the point of doing a standalone Joker movie? That's just its own thing. Because with all the other Jokers we name Ledgers, Nicholsons, Lettos that we that some people find cool and you also have the good and bad element going against it, a.k.a. Batman. The Dark Knight had Batman. Nicholson had Batman. Leto had Batman. So you had the Joker doing stuff that people may find cool, but he's still the villain of the story. Batman is still the character essentially fans are supposed to root for. My my thing with the Joker movie was going into that, what's the point of doing it? Because at the end of the day, if it's not something that's going to build into something else with a good parallel, then you are essentially going to agree with the Joker. Everything that the Joker said was something that people, like you said, you make a parallel to society. So it was something that we could all say, yeah, I get it. When he the, when he had the, the dialogue with Robert De Niro's character, we say, yeah, I get it. I, I, I if, if it was you guys make such a big deal because of these three rich white kids, if that was me, you just walk up. Yeah, yes. we agree. So then in essence, you are essentially making the Joker the character we root for in the story. And for me, I just felt like going into the movie, I felt like, what's the point of that? If it's its own thing, if it was to set up something that would eventually lead to like something with Batman or even uh, uh, something with that universe of Gotham, that's different. But it being its own standalone, that was my thing. Then what was the point of that? But yeah, so I agree. But you know what I was thinking. Like, I love the Joker because I feel like for once, one, the reason why I felt like a Joker movie, it wouldn't have been a, like, it's not a, like, what's the point? Because I think Joker always had this essence of we never knew what created Joker. But that's what makes yeah. Joker. You're not yeah. supposed you're to not, know. You're not, but I mean, you're not you're supposed not, but to you, have But that. you want to know. And we still don't really know. Honestly, he was adopted. We don't know what his parents were. So it still leaves the essence of we don't know what, who the hell Joker is. But I also like the movie because to me, I always wondered when I was watching like Gotham or I'm watching like, or I'm reading, like I'm reading the comics or I'm watching movies. I'm like, how the hell did this city get like this? Like, what the, what the fuck, yo? Like you mean tell me people just wake up and, and shoot with, with, when they eating eggs? Like, how did it get like this? But to me, I felt like Joker set up the, like the city of Gotham very fucking well. Like even Thomas Wayne's character, like, we never dove into that. And the way they made Thomas Wayne, like before when I would watch movies, like um, when I'm watching Gotham or I'm watching other um, DC movies, the way they talk about De- De- Thomas Wayne is like, oh, the dearly departed or oh, you know, because we're seeing things from the Batman perspective, like, oh, he lost his father and they make him seem like, like in a way it was kind of like a humanitarian as, but in this, like he was kind of a fucking dick, like calling people clowns and stuff like that or like not dick per se, but like he was, he was a rich man and he, you know, viewed his... Essentially had, another thing that would make you root for Joker. Right. Like, he was his... He he kind of was a ass, and you clearly see there was a division, a clear line of division among rich and among poor. And you clearly see that the poor were doing, like... They, they were angry people. Like, it took nothing to set this town off because of all the things going on. So I felt like I could now understand, like, after watching Joker and seeing his 
age story, if they did another standalone, let's just say Penguin, or did, I can now understand how these people are formed in this city. Like, because looking at how the city is, I can now understand how a Penguin came to be. I can understand how a Two-Face came to be. I can understand it now, because before I'm like, what What the hell? Have you understand Two-Face before? I mean, not, Dark Knight did a good job. No, they did. Two-Face. They did. But I'm also like understanding how like the theories and the duality behind the villains. Like, this is why I fucking love DC. Like, I love that it's like you could really do a thesis research on just the villains alone. Like, because everybody has a complex theory that it could be argued. Like, like I said, Joker was um, a bad day could really set you off. He spends his entire life trying to break bats and trying to do things to cool Gordon and killing Joke, trying to prove that you all could be essentially in a weird way. Like when you talk about Joker, you kind of got a parallel Batman. Like you had a bad day too. And you kind of had a psychotic break. Turned you into a billionaire bat. Like that's fucking normal. It's not. (laughs) Well, it's the yin and the yang of what you're describing that makes the Batman Joker relationship so so well liked and, and I so love that it was a Joker story because we already had the Batman one we already knew what the hell led to Batman becoming Batman and then now but that's DC and this is why this is my problem with DC I love their characters DC has the Joker without a doubt is the most iconic comic book villain yes. in history and Batman is arguably Batman or Superman or what people would argue is the most iconic superhero in comic book history. So my issue with it is the fact that, again, with their standalones, when you just focus on a singular character and you focus on building, they did such great, uh, such a great job world building with Gotham in this movie. And I feel like this is what you should have done when you tried to launch your cinematic universe. Yeah. Instead of rushing to just chuck Aquaman and Flash and Cyborg in Batman and Superman and let's throw Doomsday in here and let's throw Lex in there and you throwing so much at us, we're like, what the... F-? We don't care about none of these people because we, we didn't get a we chance to grow with them. The only one you did a good job with that was Wonder Woman. You know what I'm saying? But with Joker, you did such a good job at establishing and making the fans, giving the fans a reason to invest in this character. If you would have started your universe out like that and letting us live with that, and then you introduce the Batman aspect, and then you build up that showdown, that would have been the perfect way to start off your universe. It would have been. In my personal opinion, which is one of the things that makes me, I get... They wanted to do a standalone with Joker. But it's one of the things that I feel like is such a sad waste that it's not. That's not how you started Unif. Not we may get a sequel, who knows? I don't know. But they're doing a standalone Matt Reeves uh is doing a standalone Batman. And you got Birds of Prey coming out, which is in the Suicide Squad universe. So Joker, Jared Leto's Joker already exists in that universe. So Again, DC is it, it's just, it's just jumbled it's out of shit. whack. But that's my problem. You got the you have the greatest characters. And yeah. you can't get it right. The funny thing is something that you mentioned um, about like the villains. Like Marvel don't have strong villains that we really give a fuck about. Well, they Marvel don't. sells you on their heroes. heroes. DC right. sells you on their villains. And that's the thing that DC has. It's a leg fucking up. You can do something that Marvel can't do. You can do standalones with your damn superheroes on top of investing in the villains. Like... I could I, look at like I swear to God I tell you all the time you need to watch Gotham, bro. Like Gotham is a good ass freaking show, and when you watch Gotham, it's not just a folk. Batman is not even Batman. It's about Gordon, but then you also segue into Penguin. You segue into Riddler. You go into Selena Kyle. You go into you can do that shit because everybody loves these freaking characters. That's something Marvel can't do. But because you guys don't invest in y'all characters and make good movies, this is why like they don't understand what they have. They have something that just bankable on all fronts oh i will say it like this one of the other things about joker that makes it stand out on its own very well is another thing that i i've always looked at dc and i've said you need to lean more into this it's darker it's and darker it's off. and it's better a lot of dc fans i like both marvel and dc i'm oh, not yeah. a biased person i enjoy both but a lot of the the, the hardcore dc fans that i know a lot of what they like about them is that it's the darker takes that they do. So to me, when when DC started hitting the stretch around like Justice League, I felt they were getting Marvel like Marvel like like Suicide Squad. To me, is a clear attempt at the Guardians <laughs> of the Galaxy type swag. 
Justice League um, is clearly the Avengers. What you call what you call Ben Affleck's Batman? He was basically Tony Stark. <laughs> real, real talk. And just in and BVS, I thought Ben Affleck's Batman was phenomenal. I loved him. I know people don't like the fact that he killed, but whatever. But in Justice but, but see, League, they made him so they made him so jokey, and you know he's Superman throws him, and then he's oh yeah something's broke. Like no, like that's not what a lot of we we get that with Marvel. We don't need you guys to do that. But see that what you just said makes me upset because like when like because the same thing that was said. Oh, I don't like the Batman kills. Well. What the fuck? He does. Like, do you not read the comments? There's a point in his life he do end up doing that because after Robin. But, then on top but, of that with Joker, oh wait, I'm just saying with Joker, mm-hmm. so many people were like, oh, this was horrible because it was just too dark. That's DC. What were you looking for? Well, see, but then again, here's the thing about it. You said that's DC. If you're a fan of comics, you understand certain things. But if you're a casual that's not used to that, you've never been exposed to that because they did not do a good job at they didn't do a good job at really breaking down that story. Batman and Batman v Superman, they don't really do a good job at establishing the fact that this is an older Batman post Robin's death. There's a little nugget in there that if you're a fan, you'll you catch. Will catch it. But if you're a casual, you're just sitting here like, well, why is he killing? Why is he? Because you don't understand because they didn't do a good job at establishing that's how far he was pushed to the point that he got to that point. And then what brought him back was when he took, looked at Superman and um, the way they did it with the Martha thing, whatever, whatever. But what they were in going for trying to tell the story of Batman looking at Superman like a human and not like an alien, they didn't really do a good job at flushing that out. What a standalone like Joker does a good job of is flushing things out to make fans really understand certain things that they wouldn't have understand had the movie just started out with him being the Joker. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But this to me is a different type of Joker because like the way he is now, he could evolve, but I don't really see this Joker contending with Batman, like in a way of like outwitting and out. This Joker seemed like he'd agree with Batman. You know what I'm saying? Like, they Bat- don't seem Bat- like he'd thing. have that type of, oh, and you complete, like, like a le- like how they did with Ledger or Nicholson's Joker. But I feel like the Joker <clears throat> Joaquin portrayed is a Joker that kind of rivaled the Joker and killing Joke. And they had a conversation, they had a conversation. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like that's the type of Joker that, it, he's not trying to rival Batman. He's just trying to get him to understand and to break. Like, there's different, and like, this is why I fucking love Joker, because there's different ways you could go with Joker. Mm-hmm. You could go with Leto's type of Joker, which was no, the we rock. Don't need to go with that. Well, whatever. It's, you're, come on, no, hey. No well, I'm just saying, you could go with any type of Joker you want. My boss Joker, which was Nicholson. You go with Sadistic, which was Heath, uh, Heath Ledger, or a rocker, whatever Joker, which was Leto. And then you have this one that kind of reminds me of the killing joke essence of Joker, who wasn't a battle of the, like, fighting the, no, it's more like battle of the wit. Yeah, I could see him sitting down in the back and just really just mind fucking the shit out of um I'm cursing a lot, but just mind like you know, mind messing up with Batman. But it's just like I feel like that's the type of Joker Joaquin kind of got with that. And I feel like it could work if you were trying to build up that type of universe because and because it's like like I said, bat like the thing with DC that I love is because there's really you could argue that there's really no right or wrong to anything that anybody's doing because certain aspects of Batman triggered a lot of shit that fucked up a lot of the world in Gotham and certain aspects of Joker was supposed to correct or certain aspect of Two-Face. Two-Face was created because of some things that conspire with Batman or whatever's existence. Like you can kind of go into the cycle and you can really dive deep because I'm into that type of stuff. Like Marvel's a good, I love Marvel. I love Marvel for what it is. I love DC for what it is. But the thing with DC that we both agree on, they don't do a good job of staying with what they are. Well, and not really that they don't do a good job of that, but they hadn't really got their foot wet in establishing what they are to this was a good this is good right mainstream here. Mainstream casuals. Hardcores are different. Marvel has, Marvel has established its brand to mainstream cat. We know what Marvel is. So in every other aspect, in every other movie we've seen of the Joker, they've all been something that a lot, a certain age group could go into. And it's not as quote unquote dark as how this one was. So I feel like a lot of, a lot of critics take on the Joker. I feel like when you, when you review a movie, you have to go in with certain intentions. And I feel like when you go into a movie, I heard a lot of people say, 
Oh, uh, this, this movie was boring because it wasn't that much act. There wasn't really no action. Dude. But that's you know what I'm saying. <laughs> but if you're going in with the mindset of expecting to see like the Dark Knight opening with a bank hype, like you're expecting that type of stuff. Don't go see this movie. Then, but that's what I'm saying. But then you're going to be disappointed because it's not what it is. It's something, it's a character stuff. Psychological. So if you have to go in with a certain mind frame and if it doesn't meet what you expected it to meet, to give it a bad review, I feel like it's irresponsible because you're judging it based upon what you wanted it to be. Not as it is. Right. So I feel like judging it as it is, did they get the message across that they intended to get across when they put this movie together? I feel yes, because yeah. it does. It's It sparks conversation. It does. And I feel like one thing about villains in any movie, not just superhero movies, but I feel like the best movie, the best villains in cinema are those where you can look at and just despite everything, you can look at and say, I may not agree with the approach. But right. I, I get it. I get yeah. why this villain's doing this. Even with Marvel, the the people people consider the best Marvel villains have that. Thanos is probably that. Killmonger. Exactly. Vulture. You know what I'm saying? Like those are the villains that I people. I felt Vulture on a different exactly. level because I understood what you want. That's but that's what makes a good because you can look at all three of them. Where you, you may not agree with their with what the, how they go about it, but you can say I get. What started your, your mere existence, like with Vulture, is basically what I was just talking about. Your existence, where even though you're saying you were doing the right thing, saving the universe, by you doing certain things, he was out of a job, he was out of whatever, you know what I'm saying? There was, there was a cause and effect for your existence. And even with Batman and DC, there's a cause and effect with your existence. Sometimes people can argue Batman's existence created more mess than he actually Safe. And that's the debate when it comes to superheroes. That's the debate when we you look at Black Panther. Killmonger was essentially created because of what happened with his father. You look at someone like Vulture. It's it's a result of Tony Stark and a lot of things Tony Stark did that created a lot of villains in Marvel. Right. And rather than it just being the mustache twirling, I'm going to take over the world because I am evil. <laughs> Or I just want money. It's more than that. It's not just driven off that. It's something that you can sink your teeth into. And that's what I feel like with Joker has been best established with almost every single take on him. I feel like it's been established that he's he's not a one layered. He's a layered villain. Yeah, he's definitely he's not. He, he's there's so much to him that people find interesting. And I also feel like this movie also does a good job at making you feel I feel like making you sympathize with him to a way that I feel like some people can understand why Batman doesn't just kill him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm one of those fans be like, yo, kill him. A lot of shit would, a lot of shit would go easier if you just kill this dude. But when he you see it relate. from his perspective and he you relates. see what he went through, it's kind of hard to look at him and say that because it's like, you know, he's not just speaking this, this take on the Joker, you know, like, Everything that he went through, like I said, I'm watching a whole movie. And you feel, you feel, you feel, you do feel bad for him at a lot of points. This is why I said Joaquin's Joker could work because he reminds me of the Killing Joke. Because you saw how that ended. We could still help you, Joker. And then Joker ended with a good joke that made Batman laugh. And Batman laugh hysterically. Like they talk. Like it's not always just killing. Batman understands this man. He just wants to try to help him. It wasn't until he messed around and killed Robin that all hell broke loose and Joe but he snapped took a bad day that was it you know what I'm saying snap and I just feel like that this is why I just like this movie you could definitely dive deeper and deeper into a movie like this there was a point I wanted to make as you said but I feel like I'll remember it later but I did want to ask a question though because this was all that we're talking about with Joker do you think this same conversation could happen if Joker was black in this movie, mm. I think if Joker was black, he'd have got shot. I feel like it. <laughs> so just keep it a buck here. If Joker was black, he, he wouldn't he wouldn't have lived to the end of that movie, in my opinion. No. I, I think that, I, like one of my friends, when we went to see the movie, one of my friends made a point where he felt like the end was rushed. And one thing he pointed out to me was he felt like in the end, when he kills Robert De Niro and he's in the cop car and it causes all the hysteria that it causes, he felt like... They did that so fast. It wasn't, he didn't really buy that that many people would be behind Joker just because of that. And for me, I feel like in a sense, I get what you were talking about in terms of like the impact of actually killing Robert De Niro's character. Cause I don't feel like Robert De Niro's character meant as much as let's say if he would have killed Thomas Wayne. If he would have killed Thomas Wayne on live TV, then I felt like that would have been like 
okay? Because you already established so many people on edge with Thomas Wayne. So many people were against, it was almost like a Trump type character. You know what I'm saying? So many people were against him, so many people were with him. But I feel like it was more along the lines of, you know, you start, you saw the seeds planted when he killed the, the kids on the train. And you saw people in the clown mask, like, I think he's a hero. I think he's da 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 da. And he became the hero of his own story. A lot of that's the same. The same goes. We're all the heroes of our own story. You know what I'm saying? And 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 by the end of the movie, my probably my favorite part of the movie, when he takes the blood and he and he makes the smile and then he he embraces mm-hmm. that he's like everyone knows and loves him now. Because I feel like even when he bodied De Niro's character, like De Niro's character was a dick. You know what I'm saying? Like showing the footage of him bombing on the stand up and all of that stuff. So many things that I'm just watching. Like, why would you? Why would you even? Even if you know someone's not right in the head, why would you? Why would you push them like that? Like, I never understood that from a human standpoint. That's what people do every day. I I, I know that. People I get do that it every day. I don't, but I get that. But from his standpoint, like even the people that work with him, that's why my, my, one of my favorite parts when he didn't kill the midget. When I he, love that let, part. When he let the you midget always live, nice to me. I looked at the midget and I'm like, don't kill the midget. Come on, don't he didn't do midget. nothing. He really wasn't. As soon as he locked the top lock, I'm like, he's gonna kill the midget. Because the midget can't reach the lock. He was like, Arthur, can you, can you help me with this? Yeah, as soon as he said, let him go, I'm, I even said to him, like, where the fuck are you gonna go? He can't reach the lock. Yeah. Then, he's like, he's like, like, with this. I thought he was gonna kill him right there. I'm like, don't kill the midget. He was like, you were always nice to me. But again, just those little aspects are what made me, just me, I'm just speaking about me. When I watched the movie, I sympathized with the Joker. Even when he said, you were always nice to me. And it didn't, he didn't have that moment of killing him anyway just because he's evil. You know what I'm saying? As soon as the other dude came to the door, I said, he's dead. As soon as he used to come in, I was like, yeah, he about to die. He about to body you. And then he gonna go body Robert De Niro. You know what I'm saying? But I like that he didn't kill the midget. Sure, the it was still a cool. human aspect. There but I too. also think he saw a little bit, because they were mean to the midget too. Like, yeah, he saw a little bit of himself. Screen, so he saw a little bit of what he goes through. So he was mm-hmm. able to kind of have that connection with him. But I feel like it's those little things that make the Joker so in this movie that made him so like you, you feel for him. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I feel like that was that a stat that they laid the groundwork so well and it's like to that. the cinematic universe they've been trying to build for years. <laughs> that is my biggest issue with this being a standalone. I, like I said, I get it. They wanted to do a standalone. Uh, if they do a sequel, cool. If they don't do a sequel, cool. But I just feel like, yo, you did such a good job laying this groundwork and it's going to go to nothing because you did what you've been trying to do for years. And you did it because you weren't trying to outdo someone. You, just you were it. just trying to make a good standalone, which is what you did with the Nolan Batman movies. You weren't thinking about nothing else. Justice League is a clear, let's try to outdo Marvel before Avengers comes out. And it doesn't work because that's not what DC fans like from you. No. This is what they like from you. You can take it to dark places Marvel would never take it to. Because they can't. Because honestly, Marvel cartoon shows up. And like, and they, and they, and they don't have like yeah, DC's, DC's anime, and they don't, they don't have that. DC's everything. The shows, the freaking comics, the damn um, anime. I mean, what, not, what? not the Marvel Netflix shows, like the Daredevil. Oh shows? no, 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 no. The the Daredevil's like that. lit, but on um, but darker. But Gotham is lit. Mm-hmm. You gotta watch the show. But it's like that's why when you was like they market to the casualty people, it's like then I, I really don't recommend you see DC until you get some background. Like, even when people were saying stupid shit about how, oh, yeah, I want to be like Joker and Harley Quinn. Do you know their relationship? Are you serious? This is the same Joker who hung his girl up in a dark room with skulls at her feet saying, do you think you were the first Harley Quinn? This is the same one who snapped her off a table when she kept saying, put it, put it, put it. You don't know their relationship because you did not do any background research on them. So for people to be like, oh, I can't believe how dark you are. Why do you not believe it? This is the same one who strapped Gordon into a dang contraption and spun him in, like did him into a tunnel where all he saw was new pictures of his daughter. Like Joker is sick. So I was not expecting anything less than sick for this movie. But she, but it's also because let's be real here, comic book films have expanded beyond uh, beyond the audience they used to. Comic book films have become the biggest thing in cinema right now, and you have a lot of people that just go because they heard it was good. So they they're not fans. They just go because they're hearing it's good. Black Panther had that. 
Avengers had that. Oh, I hear, keep hearing about it. Let's go. So they're not knowing what they're going to expect from this. All they know is comic book film, go into it. And then they go into it. We have rated our comic book films like Deadpool and, but Joker wasn't, Deadpool was done in a lighthearted way. Those rated R. Joker was done in a way, the reason why, two things I want to say before we wrap this up. One, oh, I wasn't expecting. What the fuck were you expecting from a Joker movie that's <laughs> rated know. R? What did you expect the Joker know. to be? You expected him to just be... There was no action. You know what I'm Joker's not action all the time. <laughs> and two, the reason why so many critics and so many people, like the whole, oh, uh, uh, this movie shouldn't get an Oscar because it glorifies... It glorifies... What did they say? Glorifies... It, it glorifies murder. murder. And yeah. it, it, it... I say it like this. Okay. Let's 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 see how you're looking at this. The Joker shouldn't get an Oscar because it's violent. Um, Quite let's crazy. go let's go let's go down the realm of how many movies that have won Oscars that freaking actually have way more violence than the Joker. Matter of fact, I hear people saying Once Upon a Time in Hollywood should be nominated for a Joker. Uh, excuse me, what do all Quentin Tarantino's movies have in Blood. common? A uh, hell of a lot more violence than you saw on the Joker. Poor and blood. Slap Quentin Tarantino's movie on the Joker. Oh, this artsy take on the Joker with the violence and speak. Come on, man. Like it's like you're you're really just trying to you're you're really reaching to try to justify why you don't think this should get hyped just because it mirrors a society that yes, a certain select group of people do not want to admit is actually true. Oh, the Joker is killing. Well, what do we see on the news? What do we see people, what do we see it happening? We see people getting killed in churches. We see schools getting shot up and Black usually, man getting shot on the couch. We see all of this. And it's a, it's it's because it mirrors what is actually going on. And, and a lot of people don't want to admit that. But see, this is why, and I know like we're long, but this is why I asked that question that if he was black, what kind of con- like what kind of conversation would we have now? Because I feel like this movie is good. I, I still stand by everything I said. I but on the mirror side, we do not. We we constantly give like passes in a way to certain white white men when they go on these killing sprees. And the first thing they say is, oh, they were sick. They weren't loved at home. They wasn't this. They wasn't that. But would that same excuse happen if like everything we saw the Joker go through, let's just say it was a black man. And there's a lot of black men who go through a lot way worse. And and like let's just say they snap or they go to the streets or whatever case may be. There's no excuses for them. No, it wouldn't. There's if no Joe, excuses if for Joe, them. If Joker was black, he'd have been arrested or body when he put his hands on Thomas Wayne's son. If he, he wouldn't have even got to Thomas Wayne's gates. But when he got to Thomas Wayne's gates and he put his hands on Thomas Wayne's son, he'd have got arrested or body right there on the spot if he was black. That's right. that's it's just it's what it is. Yeah, like it's like I feel like in a way it's like this movie could be used as like a oh well you know there's a lot of sick white males out there but no we're not talking about i feel like it did a good thing of shining a light on people with disabilities that you don't see like the mental ones Mm -hmm. but i also feel like we're not it's like i don't want this to be becoming like a subtle excuses movie for so they try to make it they try to twist it into something to where you're celebrating a villain you're celebrating a villain that murders people. You are glorifying violence and that should not happen because it's a comic book movie. And to me, what I say to that in closing is you say that because that's how you're taking the story and you're twisting it to make it fit your narrative. Right. You could do that with anything. For instance, I love Avengers Infinity War, right? Does Avenger, you could you, could you not say that Avengers Infinity War glorifies genocide. They get it we all said pages. that, yo, I get Thanos' point. What's and Thanos trying Kilmar to do? Well. What is Thanos trying to do? He's mm-hmm. trying to wipe out half the population and he's telling you why he's going to do it. And you had people saying, you know what? He makes a good point. And Killmonger, Does that not glorify genocide in a sense? And Killmonger had a point too, but I guess he yeah. wanted to wipe out all white. But people. again, but again, <laughs> again, it depends on how you're breaking down what your point is to make it fit your narrative. You try to do that with Joker because you don't like that it mirrors shit that's really going on that you don't want to have a conversation about. That's just a fact. Right. It's just a fact. Period. Yeah. Well, we could go all day because obviously we're two two huge fans of this movie and it's so many layers and so many things you could take from this. So 
please, in this one, definitely comment, definitely share, definitely tell your friends, mothers, sisters, brothers, watch this movie if you've seen this movie. Once again, spoiler alert, but share and tell us how you feel about this film. Until next time, peace.